Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony and welcome to another edition of BNA Sports Talk. So last night, breaking news, I woke up at like 2 a.m. East Coast Standard Time or something like that, 2.30, whatever it was in the morning. And I saw breaking news on my phone. Woj announced the, the deal. I'm pretty sure everyone knows about it. And I kind of want to throw my thoughts out. Now, this is like perfect Kawhi Leonard type thing at night making the deal when everyone's asleep. And then he did it on the weekends, all these talking heads on, on the, you know, um, you know, Stephen A. Smith, all your Max Kellermans, Colin Cowherds, all, all your Chris Carters, Nick Wrights. Yeah, everybody can't talk about it. And plus, everyone had an opinion and nobody thought that this was possible. I texted my friend the other day. I'm like, hey, I don't see him going to the Clippers because there's nobody there. And then I texted him this morning, like, well, they found somebody. And uh, that person was Paul George. I thought, uh, my first reaction was, okay, who are the shooters? And then I started looking at their roster, and I'm like, you know, this is uh, this is actually a pretty good roster. You know, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, they pretty much have the same play style. Uh, both non-volume shooters. Paul George averaged 28 points, and I had career highs, well, above career highs and well, like averages, and rebounds, assists, and all those certain stats, highs and PERs, and... Oh. I was expecting to see Paul George's stats, like, horrible. Uh, but he was the third in the MVP race. I, I, I didn't expect him to see him that good. I didn't realize Paul George played that well. And, you know, he didn't really work with Russell Westbrook. Chris Paul doesn't really work with James Harden. And, you know, uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder were the team to pull the trigger. And now Oklahoma City got a buttload for him. A buttload. I don't know how much that is, but it, it I don't, yeah, it's pretty much what Oklahoma City got. They got two trade swaps. With five players, four first round picks, one unprotected. It, it's they got they got the kitchen sink. Uh, there's no better way to say it. And they got a lot of things. And I think going forward, this is the way to go. Apparently, OKC is thinking about trading Russell Westbrook. Honestly, I'd keep him. They want to build around this one guy that I never heard of before. They see the future in him. I'd keep Russell Westbrook until his contract is up. And yeah, so that's what I would do. I don't think Russell can go to any team. They're exploring it. Unless you can get another star back. If they would trade him, potential trade targets for Russell Westbrook, now that I think of it, uh, you're obviously not going to be able to trade the Pacers. Victor Oladipo is, you know, there for good. All the teams with the new free agents, with uh, Boston, they're not going to be willing to get rid of uh, Kemba Walker, but maybe... You can get Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and then Russell Westbrook comes there. But then you have that same thing again with Russell Westbrook and Kyrie Irving. I'm not sure if that would work. Uh, Just looking at the Knicks were the only team to really strike out. If you want to count the Raptors, sure. But they're coming off of a... They're coming off of a championship, so they're good for the next 30 years or whatever it is. So they're they're just chilling. They they have no chance to win it now. But there's there are going to be teams that are on the brink and that would want a player... Um, to send him over the top, but Russell Westbrook has such a negative stigma towards him. They would have to pay him $40 million a year and swallow that contract. The Heat were apparently looking at him, Pat Riley. You compare him with, I guess, Jimmy Butler, but then, you know, Russell Westbrook's going to want the ball. Jimmy Butler, I think their personalities are just going to clash way too much. I don't think they could work together. That's the problem with Russell Westbrook. You you develop this monster, and then you want to get rid of him, and all of a sudden it's just like, oh, yeah, where is he going to go to? The Sacramento Kings, I think, have a decent amount of cap space left. Yeah, I don't think that he would be willing to go to Sacramento, kind of hide there. Obviously, you can't go to the Clippers, the Warriors. You look at a bunch of teams, it's going to be really hard to deal away Russell Westbrook. Phoenix Suns, maybe. I would say maybe get some of their their young developing pieces, but they already traded away Josh Jackson in that big trade. Again, like the Brooklyn Nets that were really active in free agency, the Milwaukee Bucks are trying to win a championship, and they think that their core right now is really good, so they're not going to be willing to get rid of any of their big pieces at least. And just if again, if you go down the list, not too many teams. Utah Jazz, um, the Dallas Mavericks. I, I think they're they're good with Porzingis and Luka Doncic. Even though you could say they kind of lost on free agency, no. A lot of teams have made already made all their moves, and they were trying to get rid of Russell Westbrook, and they couldn't. Now they're going to be stuck with him in his contract, and he's just going to ride it out. I mean, it's good they have a lot of young developing pieces. They're, they couldn't win as as constructed with Paul George and Russell Westbrook first round exit after first round exit, and they realize they can blow it up. The Rockets still think that they have a window with James Harden and Paul, uh, Chris Paul, and plus, they can't get rid of Chris Paul either. So there's um, that. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of any teams off the top of my head. You know, 76ers wouldn't want them. They, they maybe I mean maybe the Orlando Magic. 
if you can, but they don't have a, a star that you can get unless you want Aaron Gordon. But I think that you just ride out the Russell Westbrook contract. You got you got rid of one of your big stars. Don't blow it all up. You still need to sell season tickets. And yeah, so people want to see Russell Westbrook average another triple double for what the fourth straight year now. And yeah, so Russell Westbrook, he's kind of stuck. Uh, happy Paul George Day. Paul George Day is tomorrow in Oklahoma City. How awkward is that? Um, that's been one of the most awkward things in sports ever to declare Oklahoma City Day and then have it traded. As far as Los Angeles Clippers, how good can they be? I mean, I think it's NBA Finals or bust for them. Again, I looked at this roster at first. I'm like, where are their shooters? They have a lot of shooters. Only question I have is defense. Uh, but they had a lot of defense metal. They had to get rid of so many players like Danilo Gallinari uh, that were uh, more offensive-minded. But uh, the main problem I have with this team is... Well, I would say three-point shooting and kind of uh, striking like that. You know, because Kawhi Leonard's mainly a, a, a two-guard, and him and Paul George mainly play the same way. So their two stars play the exact same way. You're, you might have a little problems with defense, uh, like big like centers. But centers don't win in this league anymore. And, yeah, so we, we've seen that over the past couple of years. Guards. You need really strong guards to win, and uh, they have that. Uh, the Clippers are made to take down any team. And, yeah, that's just my opinions about it. I think the Lakers are still the better team. It, the Lakers kind of missed out a little bit, but they went all in. They went all, all in on Kawhi. Do I think they should have? No, I, I don't. I think they were, they were wrong to think that Kawhi Leonard would want to join a three-headed monster. That's not who he was. I said... It's between the Raptors and Clippers. And I said the only problem with the Clippers is they needed a star. I'll talk about this more probably in my next episode of BNA Sports Podcast. But I want to get this quick up, uh, quick on the page. Kind of my first reactions, my first kind of thoughts. And yeah, I'm just glad that all the small YouTubers can upload now. Because all, all the big guys have like podcasts that they only p- uh, put on at a certain time. And they can't react to news like this. This is where people like us have the advantage, I think. Unless you have, want to have Stephen A. wake up at 3 a.m. and explain the trade and everything. But hope you guys enjoy. Let me know your opinions about the trade. And uh, I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.